Well, hey y'all, happy Monday. Well, welcome back. So today, instead of taking a tour, um, because we have a little bit of change, but not that much, so next week we'll catch back up with a tour. Today, I'm gonna teach you um, a way that I make compost tea or castings tea from worm castings. And I'm gonna show you a little project that we did in the garden and we're gonna harvest some cauliflower. But right now, I'm gonna show you all the ingredients that we're gonna use to make the tea, um, how we're gonna make the tea bag, and then we're gonna set it all up and then I'll show you those other things. Okay, so let's go. I can't wait to show you how to do this because I want you to know exactly how easy it is so that you can do it yourself and it'll save you a lot of money because once you make the investment in these things, then most of them will last you quite a while. So our base ingredient is gonna be this um, worm castings. You could also use compost. The fresher, the better. This isn't super fresh, but we're gonna make do with it. Um, a second ingredient that we're gonna use is azomite and that's going to bring some trace minerals in and then something new that I've never tried before is I'm going to add kelp mill and I'm also I haven't done this in a while but I'm also going to give some unsulfured molasses and this is going to help feed all the microorganisms that we're going to be wanting to get going in our soil so I'm going to do two handfuls or just like you know putting both of my hands together and getting a good scoop out with both my hands. Then I'm going to do a half a cup of azomite and I'm going to do a half a cup of kelp mill. Usually this is just a handful. I just grab a handful and I throw it in there, but just to kind of help you, I'm going to use a half a cup and then I'm going to use a tablespoon of the molasses. And then I'll, once I get my tea bag made and I'll show you what I'm going to use for that. You could use cheesecloth, um, but you know, I love um, twall, tulle. T-U-L-L-E. You can get this for like 99 cents at Hobby Lobby and I love it. I love to protect plants with it. I love making tea bags out of it. Um, it's just the handiest thing and I use it over and over. So if it rips, I don't care. I just get me a good piece I can keep working with and it's almost time for me to buy some more but this is going to be my tea bag. So I'm just going to lay it out flat I'm gonna pile in all my ingredients, I'm gonna tie it up, and then I'm gonna take you outside. We're gonna set up the water bubbler and we're gonna get the molasses in there and show you how to do all that. Okay, so I actually ended up getting another handful of the castings, as you saw. Um, it just didn't look like the right ratio for everything else I was going to put in. But this is my tea bag, and then I'm going to use these long strands here to kind of tie it to my bucket. Um, but let's go check that out. Okay, so you could make a compost tea just by letting it sit in water, but really i've found a lot of success with what they call an aerated tea so i've really got just a super inexpensive stone here like you would put in an aquarium with a really really super simple little air line hose pump thing and i just try to keep this all the way down at the bottom now typically um not typically you always want to use unchlorinated water so the easiest way to do that is just fill up your five gallon bucket put your bubble stone in there and let it bubble for 24 hours and then you can set up your tea bag and you typically want to let your tea um, bubble for a minimum of 24 hours um, and the longer the better so i'm going to put the tea bag on and show you what that looks like now i'm going to get um, my molasses and i'm just going to get you know a decent tablespoon And then I'm gonna take it over here to my bucket and I'm just gonna kinda of stir it until it kinda of starts to leave the spoon. And you can see I've got my tea bag here just suspended off of 
the handle and I typically like it to be a little bit further down in the water um, so I might make it a little bit longer and another inexpensive thing I've done before to make a tea bag is I've just used like a pillowcase an old pillowcase because we've got a lot of that so I'm just swirling all this molasses in here and the molasses is like I said it's just going to feed all the little microorganisms that we're trying to build up in here and the way that we're going to know that this tea is really good and done is all these bubbles are going to start to form a foam and that foam means everything is active and living and ready to go. Compost tea is a great and inexpensive way to feed your plants. You can feed them um, by pouring it into the soil. You could also feed them by spraying it onto the leaves, which is called foliar feeding. Um, and then a time like this, when it's been raining a lot, that means that a lot of nutrients are just being washed away by the rain. So for me, especially um, with my brassicas, it's a really good time for me to give some good nutrients back to the plant so instead of just doing the fish fertilizer I wanted to make up some tea and share it with you so um, now we're gonna move on to the little projects that we've got going on in the yard so as you can see I got the strawberry plants planted over here um, but as you can also see this bed doesn't get a ton of light at this particular time of the year in addition to that um, this seems to be one of the coldest areas of the yard and because that and because of that and the temperatures being in like as low as 37 for the rest of the week um, i wanted this bed to have a cold frame um, and i also wanted it to have a shade and protected frame so my husband rigged up this little hoop um, kind of system for me if you will that's going to let me one right now i'm going to be able to go get some plastic and um he and i'll show you in a minute how it's all kind of put together but in the in the winter i can cover it in plastic and make a little greenhouse um in the summer um this bed actually gets a lot of sun in the morning and it really beats on this bed hard so I'll, able, I'll be able to use the frame to put shade cloth up and then also when all my berries are coming out before it gets super super hot I'll be able to use this to put a netting up to protect my berries from all the birds so it's as simple as this um he got this tubing I'll find out from him and try to put it in the comments but it's just you know uh, some type of PVC tubing that came in a roll and then we already had these little stakes that was part of a tomato cage system so he just cut those and made them anchors buried them down in the soil and then um, anchor the PVC onto them so that it'd be really stable then um, to connect it and give it a little bit more stabilization he came in with some little T joints again PVC um, here and again on the end and that's just going to protect it from the wind and it is really stable um, and then the next thing that he did is that he found an old water hose and he made kind of these little clamps for us so whether it's the plastic whether it's the shade cloth we still might have to use a couple of clamps but this was a really simple way for him to create a little hoop um, style system for this bed so that I could protect it from a variety of things so there's a little how-to for you now for once my husband has been pretty anxious to harvest something and that's been the cauliflowers and so we wanted to wait today to kind of show you that um, to show you what it looks like when it's almost been too long so this is our cauliflower and it looks beautiful but you really want a head that is tightly compacted like this if you don't remember this essentially is going to end up being the flower of the plant so by the time it begins to separate as it is here um, that means it's moving into its next stage where those little nodules are going to shoot up and become their own individual flowers so we're going to go ahead and harvest this cauliflower today we might let that one stay a day and then we'll harvest this one as well um, so uh, that's an important thing to know and we've also had some yellowing of the leaves and my husband thinks that that's an over amount of nitrogen but to me if there was too much nitrogen everything wouldn't be making 
you know, vegetables and stuff. So, um, what I think it is, is that it needs some nutrition. So I'm going to go ahead and pop these crowns off. I'm just going to come down here at the bottom and I'm going to cut off right there at the base and I can't, I need both hands to do it, but I'll show you what these pretty little things look like when I get done. So there's those two beauties and I just kind of cut them off at the bottoms there and we've got these on the menu tonight. Um, they're not very big, you know, now maybe if I would have fertilized more, we would have gotten more growth out of them. And to me, all that purple, if you can kind of see in there, is just being cold and ready to come out of the garden. So that is a little tip on when you should be harvesting your cauliflower and how to not let it go too long. I hope that you enjoyed learning how to make compost or castings tea. And just remember, just like with anything you cook in the kitchen or any kind of tea blend that you make for your cup of tea, you can mix that recipe up in a lots of different ways. Like I said, the kelp was new for me. I've used um, some manure in there before I've changed up different elements that I put in there so feel free to play around um, get yourself a five gallon bucket a little sewn a little air bubbler thing and boom you've got a way to make yourself a really inexpensive fertilizer for your garden I also hope that you enjoyed learning how to make a little hoop um, set up for your bed or some containers that you might have and lastly I hope you enjoyed my little tips about cauliflower and also I hope you're having the best day ever we want to thank you so much for always checking in whenever you get a chance and happy holidays <laughs>